Being scared of something is an interesting concept. Sometimes we can be scared when someone surprises us by accident. Sometimes we can be scared if we think we're going to get hurt either physically or emotionally. Sometimes we can feel scared about something that might or might not happen in the future. And sometimes we enjoy being scared by roller coasters or ghost rides. Other times we can have a very specific fear that only some people have known as a phobia. It's something that's so common we end up taking it for granted in our everyday lives, but you may wonder why being scared exists in the first place. My name is Danny Burke, and why do we get scared? Fear saves lives. It might not be a pleasant experience, but it's one that we owe our very existence to. Our distant ancestors did not live in the world we did, where many of us take our comfort and safety as the norm. They lived in caves, forests, and savannas that contained animals that could easily kill a puny human. If they wanted to survive and pass on their genes, they needed a way to escape these predators. Luckily, most animals, including humans, had a built-in system to deal with danger, fight or flight. When we sense something dangerous, the body's sympathetic nervous system is kicked into action. This stimulates the adrenal gland which releases adrenaline and noradrenaline. Anyone who has ever had an adrenaline rush will know what this feels like. The heart rate increases, blood is pumped away from our digestive system and towards our muscles and limbs to help us either run away from the danger or try and fight it. It's also very stressful but this stress actually helps you focus in the face of the danger. Have you ever experienced a threatening situation and got tunnel vision or loss of hearing? These are supposed to help you zone in on the danger at hand without any distractions. All of this prepares the human body for the fight of its life. But quite often our ancestors would not be able to fight the danger, instead they would try and run from it. This is known as the flight part of fight or flight. Trying to run away also requires the blood to be pumping and your muscles ready for action. But sometimes choosing not to fight can include not moving at all. If an animal doesn't think it can fight or run away from the danger, but it thinks the predator might not have seen it yet, it may freeze. Have you ever heard a creepy noise in a house at night and frozen in your tracks? You may be waiting to see if the danger has seen you. This system helped our early ancestors avoid countless danger. It's become an integral part of most animals' survival, but that doesn't mean it's perfect. Firstly, this jumpiness and anxiety that we have might have worked when we lived alongside dangerous predators, but those days are long gone. Over half of all people now live in urban areas where human predators are not an issue, but our fight or flight reaction is still triggered when faced with problems of modern life. Some things still work great. Most people feel fear at the top of tall buildings in the same way their ancestors did in tall trees or on tall cliffs. Other things don't work quite as well. If you think about an upcoming exam, your heart might start beating fast, as if you had just seen a snake. If you remember leaving your keys, phone, or some other important object back at your house when you really need them, you might tense up, feel that drop in your stomach, and begin to have the same reactions as if forgetting your phone was an actual predator. Every day, billions of people have fight or flight stress hormones pumped into their bodies for situations that obviously don't pose any real threat to our physical survival. When faced with heavy traffic or bad drivers, many people get angry and punch something, or even worse, punch another driver. This is our animal brain, seeing traffic as a genuine, anxiety-inducing threat that we can't run away from, so of course we must fight it somehow. Obviously, punching the steering wheel or another person doesn't really solve anything. We can also be scared by a concept known as fear transference. This is where we are scared of something not because it's a threat to our survival or because it's a modern-day stress, it's when people are scared of something because they have a negative memory attached to it, either consciously or subconsciously. If this fear is irrational and of no danger to the person, it's known as a phobia. Some phobias have easy to see roots. Arachnophobia, the fear of spiders, is the most common phobia on the planet. This is most likely a built-in response to a time when most humans lived alongside venomous spiders. But these days, many people still have the fight or flight response to harmless house spiders. Phobias like this are often spread by genetic inheritance or even just seeing other people scared of that thing. Indirect association is often a phobia that has its roots in a personal experience. Personally, I have slight claustrophobia after being locked in a bathroom cubicle for 10 minutes as a child. Now, this doesn't mean that my life is under any threat whenever I'm in a small space, but I can still feel the slight beginnings of fight or flight if elevator doors don't open quickly enough. The good news is that unlike a lot of animals, humans have the ability to overcome their fears. We can identify where they come from, understand if they are justified, and if they are not, we can train ourselves to overcome them. Being scared of the threat saves countless people's lives every day around the world, but there is no doubting that some of the fight or flight responses aren't as necessary for some people living in the modern, increasingly urbanized world. Still, next time you're nervous about a date, running late for work, or just have a strange fear of bunny rabbits. Just remember that being scared helped your ancestors survive real dangers, and in some ways, it's the reason you're here today. My name is Danny Burke. Thanks for watching Life's Biggest Questions. We provide the answers, but we'd love to hear your questions. So let us know down below which question you want answered, and I'll see you in the next video.